tidur You and the Westdale. It's quite the story. Folks watching movies right here since 1935, with the good times rolling up to 2017, when the grand old lady was almost torn down. But thanks to fundraising, it was saved by a group of community volunteers, folks like you. And now, the Westdale's a showpiece, a not-for-profit charitable organization restored to its full glory and heritage designated to boot. Cool. So then right from this very seat, you could check out way more than just great movies. There's all kinds of arts and culture, music, uh, talks, uh, performances, and of course, popcorn. But like in all good stories, there's an unexpected twist. 2020 hits and bam, the new normal, with stages going dark all over the world. Uh, oh, thank, thank you. Now, it doesn't take a PhD in accounting to know no lights, no camera, no cash. Which means we need a little help from our friends to keep on keeping on. So if you can donate a little or a lot, it sure would help us keep the lights on, making you one of the heroes of this story. Stay tuned for the next chapter in the Westdale. Fantastic. Hi, folks. Good evening, and welcome to Hamilton Originals. Tonight, we've got Karen Thornton. Take it away, Karen. And if only I knew back then what I know now. Follow my dreams out of my own through somehow. Bottom line is, I was only trying to get closer to love. We can spend our whole lives being cautious and aware, but what a shame if we lose the ones who really care. Bottom line is, we of all trying to get closer to love for love is the greatest reward and we all can afford to give a little more each day you may have done well they are buried in your past they're really said and done bottom line is we are all trying to get closer to love I know is I just wanna be closer to 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 I just wanna be closer
closer to I just wanna be 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 closer to love Sweet love Sweet! Karen Thornton on the Ivories there. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank thank you. you. Thank you for showing up on our show, Karen. Appreciate that. Thank you for asking. Okay. <laughs> and we've got Paul Inson on the double bass. Yeah, we're going to talk about you in a minute, though. I'm going to tell them all about how we met in the penitentiary a while ago. <laughs> but before we get to that, <laughs> let's talk about your past, Karen. Sure. I know um, you started out very young. I did. Yes, uh, I think we might even have a picture of, uh, this is probably the first picture of you performing on the greatest Hamilton talent show ever, Tiny <laughs> Talent Time. Yes, yes, yeah. That's you, eh? That was me, I was nine years old, yeah. Nine. Were you uh, terrified or how did it feel going on TV? Well, you know, my friend and I, who's not pictured on the, in here with me, we were both nine. She was probably about a foot taller than me, even though we were the same age. And, you know, growing up, wow, like Tiny Talent Time was the big time. And if you knew anybody that went on Tiny Talent Time, it was like a ritual every week you'd watch it. It was thrilling. So the fact that, um, you know, we sent a letter and we didn't even put a stamp on it, and it... <laughs> And it still made it somehow. And yeah, I mean, that was really exciting for us. That was uh, really a terrific time. Yeah, those were the days. I think it was on Sundays at like 5 o'clock yep. or something, right? It was just before Sunday dinner, I recall. Yep, families used to get together and watch it. It was like, a, it was a big deal. Isn't there a second picture of that, that Mark? Um, yeah, there ah, you are. There's there your... she is. That's Allison, yeah. Yeah, Allison. Is she the same age? Or... Yeah, same age. But she's just taller. She's just taller. Okay. You, you did grow a little bit. A little then, bit, but... a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> ah, great. Well, that's a tiny talent time for you. And so tell me, like at that point, um, what were you doing there? You're, it looks like you're top dancing. Me. No, hang on. Back a picture. Back a picture, Mark. There. What are you doing there? Singing? We were okay. singing, and I think, what did we sing? Because we were on twice. Oh. The second time, we actually put a stamp on the letter. Oh, um, good. We got called back. <laughs> right. uh -oh. um, but we were on first time, we were nine, and I think we did. What did we do? Oh, secondhand gals. And you know what? Matt Ken Kennedy, the great pianist from Hamilton, was the accompanist there, and it was like. <laughs> Daddy has a business. It was that Barbara Streisand big hit. And still, instead of it being secondhand uh, rose, we did secondhand gals. And we had a little dance routine we figured out. And we thought uh, we were so clever. But we had so much fun. We had oh. so much fun. Oh, I'll bet. That does look like fun. And um, so uh, dancing and, and a little singing, were you, uh, how did you learn to do that? You took dance lessons, I guess. No, not really. Not um, I really. mean, you know what, we just, growing up in Burlington at that time, and Allison was uh, such a good friend, and our parents had a lot of um, great music in the home, and, and we used to practice in her basement quite a bit, and they had a lot of uh, music from musicals, so we would kind of come up with our own choreography, and choreography, sorry, and we would uh, mime to different songs, <laughs> and uh, no, we just kind of did our own thing, we just kind of learned by watching, we just, we just loved that so much. Yeah, uh, I can imagine. And little kids often do that. I know I did when I was a kid. You know, air guitar in front for of the sure, mirror or whatever. For sure. Sure, yeah. Did you ever sing to musicals? Uh, no. <laughs> 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 I never made it to Tiny Talent Time either. <laughs> it's one of my dreams, but I guess the dream is gone. So you're self-taught then? At that point, yeah. So I hadn't played uh, an instrument oh. then. I didn't get my piano till I was 12. But yeah, I mean, there was lots of music in the home, for sure. I mean, my dad loved to sing. He was a drummer as well, part-time. Uh, grew up in a church. There was great music in the church, lots of opportunities there to sing. And um, 
Yeah, I mean, just just love music. Let's see that next picture. I think that was your dad. There's your dad. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and that's a great picture. Look at that microphone. That's oh, like from that. the forties or something. Yeah, that's uh, an old. That's an uh, old one. Yeah, look at the wire hanging off it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was your old pie. Mm -hmm. Now um, I'm gonna skip ahead, and maybe we can. Um, well, no, we'll get to that. We have a video of, of your dad singing, I think. But going back to um, your past, what were your main musical influences? Why did you kind of get inspired to play? Well, it's, it's interesting because they were kind of all over the place. I mean, I loved um, the music that I grew up that was in the home, which was big band music. Big band? Big band. My dad used to love to sing. So it was big band, um, Duke Ellington, Count Basie, um, you know, Glenn Goodman. Miller, Benny yeah, Goodman, yeah. exactly. And so I always loved that style of music. I love uh, the chords, and I love the romantic um, lyrics and the, and the romantic sentiment to those songs. Yeah, so right. even as a really young girl, I really loved those. But when I started uh, writing songs and playing piano when I was about 12, um, probably more singer-songwritings, so, sorry, singer-songwriters, uh, some more folk artists. So. I like stuff all over the place. And then later on, you know, I really got into Carole King. I loved her as a singer-songwriter because of the fact that she played the piano and so many singer-songwriters play guitar, so I could yeah. really relate to that. Yeah. Um, and I've always loved Stevie Wonder. I love, uh, oh, just love him. He's, he's one of my favorites for sure. So, yeah. Um, yeah, my tastes are all over the place, but definitely my influences were probably uh, the music that I grew up with. Nice. Yeah. All right. And then skipping ahead to when you're, I guess, a little older, but still a teenager. Um, oh, there we are. There's uh, Now, would that have been about the time you were playing the Knights 2 coffee house? It would have been probably right after that. So I actually had a gig, and um, I needed a promo picture. So a friend of the family <laughs> from a uh, photographer from church actually came over and took the picture. and. Um, I thought that was pretty special. Yeah, I thought that was really special. It's like trick photography yeah. with the two of you Actually, there, I think it was a mistake. Um, <laughs> he, he didn't do that on purpose, but it ended up uh, turning out pretty cool. So, yeah. And that was my prom dress. I, that was the only fancy dress I had, so oh. that was my prom dress. <laughs> oh, okay, good enough. <laughs> got, at least it got double duty there, because they yeah. usually don't, right? They get exactly. one shot, and that's it. It's like your wedding gown. Exactly. One shot. And at the Knights, too, I just want to mention another really big Hamilton musical icon, and that would be Bill Powell, mm -hmm. who uh, ran Knights, too, among other things, a uh, festival of friends. Yeah. And, and I guess he was a, a mentor or an influence of sorts. Yeah, I'm just trying to remember who introduced me to him. <clears throat> I'm not sure if it was a teacher um, in high school who actually was running a folk club. Um, Stefan Ganesh might have. I'm not sure, but I do remember meeting him when I was quite young, um, and I think I probably was about mm, maybe 15, 16. Oh, wow. And I, I think the thing that I, I really liked about him was that I was always self-conscious of the style of songs that I wrote, and I would go to the Knights Two Coffee House, and it was very much folk orientated, which I really loved too. But he really encouraged me to. Um, play the songs even though, uh, you know, they were a different style of music. Um, he just, yeah, I remember him saying, just just, just, just go ahead, just do it, you know, yeah. just do what you do. It's all, so I had some interesting changes, you know? Yeah, that, you don't get that in folk music <laughs> <laughs> on guitar. Yeah. But he was great. He was just such a, an encouraging person. Oh, and yeah. um, no I really appreciate it. He, he gave me some confidence to, um, uh, write the music that I liked, you know, that, that, that brought me joy. Well, you got to love him for that. Bill yeah. Powell. How about another song? Yeah. And how about one I could play along Absolutely. in? Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. We're going to do uh, one, another song. Uh, this is called It Just Ain't So. It Just Ain't So. But we're going to make it so. Make it so. Get that double bass up. There we go. Okay. Everyone's so 
Cause I'm just a lucky so-and-so Cause I got a man who's so hard to hold Everyone says I should be doing well From all accounts I should be looking swell But there's some pain Down deep in my soul Cause I know With the choices that I made They don't know what's really going on You play me like a fool Like a song And there's a pain Down deep in my soul Cause I know It just ain't so Tell me, tell me what is true you darling I just don't know Just ain't so. It just ain't so. Yeah. Just saying, it just ain't so. Nice, Karen. Nice, thanks. Hey. Well. Thanks for playing along. Let's get back to your pa, because mm -hmm. uh, I kind of feel sorry for the guy on your first gig. You told me uh, he had to drive you to your first gig. No, it's not yeah. like that. See, okay. I had been gigging at uh, Hess Lo House locally. in Hess Village on weekends, which then later became the Gallon Gavel. Right. When I was, I think, 16? Yeah, 16, 17. Um, but then, when I finished high school and I continued playing, um, I got a booking agent, and um, she booked me really far, really far. It was in <laughs> Elliott Lake. Elliott Lake. And it was a really nice place. It was a lovely place. Um, really nice hotel with all the nice amenities, and I loved it. But um, my parents, naturally, because I was so young, um, and I mean, I love the fact that they never said, and they could have, because I was young and I was living with them, of course, and they could have said, we don't want you to do this, but they, they didn't. Um, I don't think they were crazy about it, and I can honestly say I get it, a, a young woman traveling alone, yeah. but, um, but they let me, they let me do it, and my dad said, I'll drive you. Your dad drove you. So he you drove me, and he Elliot stayed overnight, and then wow. came back and got me at the end of the week. Oh, man, because that's like, I don't know, six hours it is. or so. It it's is. A long haul. It is. Oh, God bless them. I, I hope mean, they gave you gas so nice. money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a hike. Um, I think we have a video. Now, before we play this video, um, I, I'd like you to explain what's going on. Now, is this the one that my dad and I This is, together? yes, it's under my skin. Oh, yeah. So, my dad passed away 13 years ago, and... Um, 
uh, 14 years ago, he decided he was going to record himself singing just for family and friends, and he was a huge Frank Sinatra fan. And so he had a, a recording of um, Frank Sinatra singing with these great big band arrangements that were done by um, oh, Quincy Jones. Sorry. Oh, Quincy. Yeah, Quincy Jones. It was, it was a beautiful record. And my dad had been a salesman over the years, and he was always, you know, traveling throughout the U.S. and picking up these little gadgets. And I remember him saying, I've got this thing that I bought, and I'm going to be able to use it, and I can uh, play these recordings, and it takes out the lead vocal so that I can sing to these beautiful arrangements. It removes the lead vocal. But it doesn't really. So it does, okay. <laughs> it makes it quieter. So, uh, but it doesn't remove it completely. So he had to really work on his phrasing to make sure that it was the same as Frank Sinatra's. And like I said, this was just for family and friends. So yeah. he recorded himself singing. And then um, a few years after that, uh, for my 25th wedding anniversary, we renewed our vows. And um, I just so wanted my dad to be a part of this. So I went to a friend's and recorded myself singing along with him, which was so special, because mm. he was still a part of that day and a part of that celebration, so nice. that's what it is. All right, so we're going to hear that now. We're going to hear you singing along with your dad. Yeah. Uh, on the video. Don't you know, little fool, you never can win. Use your mentality. Wake up to reality. Got you under my skin. And there's you. Yeah. Beside him. He's singing yeah. away. Yeah. That was sweet. So, uh, yeah, that, that's great. He got that invention, removing vocals, so you guys could actually do that. <clears throat> I'm not well. sure how legal it was. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought of that. It was never supposed to intended to be used for professional purposes, right? But, you know, the thing is, he went and did this, and he did record the whole album with him singing, and like I said, a year later, he passed away, so it was just so great to have this to, uh, to listen to. Oh, that is great. Mm -hmm. Now, back to when you were on the road after Elliot Lake, you continued on and mm -hmm. kept playing. Uh, I think you did a lot of Toronto piano bars and Hamilton, um, besides Nights 2, uh, what else? Well, that was about it. That kept me busy because, you know, it's, it's funny when you talk to some younger musicians today and you remind them that when I used to travel and go on the road, it was always a six-night-a-week yeah. gig. And that's almost unheard of, right? That's well, unheard especially of, now. Yeah. And sometimes there would be matinees too. So, <clears throat> so sometimes I would play like five till seven and then eight till 12 or nine till one. So... Um, it was work, yeah. and you know, I don't think I, I how can I put it, um, I just left high school and that's what I did. I didn't even really put a lot of thought to it. I just wanted to work. I, I knew at that time I didn't want to continue my education, and so I just went on the road, and that was kind of my education. And the one thing that I will say that it taught me, when you travel by yourself, and you don't solo very well, and if you're playing six nights a week, and sometimes it's six hours a night, you learn a lot of songs. <laughs> you learn a lot of songs, because you're probably doing about 50 and 60, right? Yeah, yeah. A night, so for that, it was just a great opportunity to, um, yeah, just to continue to um, constantly learn songs you know, popular songs and then songs from all the different decades. And yeah. um, so that was a really good training ground. Nice. And then you also, I think, did some jingles? I did. I did some jingles as well um, uh, on a smaller scale, so nothing that you might necessarily recognize. Okay. But that was really, that was really fun too. And I loved doing jingles because it was always usually with other people as well. And I always loved uh, singing harmony with other people. So yeah. That's nice. Mm -hmm. And then there was the Little Big Band, headed up by... Russ Little had a big band, yeah, yeah. who's a wonderful trombone player. Um, the Russ Little Big Band. Yeah, so I, um, along with, uh, I think it was Michael Dunstan at the time, um, we, uh, you know, we went and, and uh, did some events. 
um, it's interesting because it's such a big band, so most of them, I, from what I remember, like corporate gigs, you wouldn't get a very rare to have a big, you know, big band in a club. Um, so usually more corporate events, but that also was great. And the first time that I ever stood up and sang without having my piano. <laughs> so that's something too. That's yeah. a whole different thing because I'd always grown up accompanying myself. But once again, it was just a good stretch and something different for me to do and a chance to, to learn some different repertoire too. Nice. And then I believe, um, well, you got the house gig at the Ancaster Old Mill. I did. I did. So that was, uh, I, just, I just lived down the road from there. I I've know. There, did you ever come in? I, well, not when you were there. <laughs> but... <laughs> I've been I was, in there a lot. Yeah, I was there for, you know, I had, at that point, I was very much more part-time. And that was great because that was weekends. I did that for about 18 years. Uh, wow. I think we have a shot of that. Do we, uh, can we show that one? I think it's you at the uh, piano, like the... Oh, I don't the grand piano there, yeah, oh, there you no. are. Oh, no, that, was, that, was, uh, that oh. was just about four or five years ago. Okay, well, let's pretend. But it could have been It could have been right? you at the Ancaster Old Mill. And I probably had that dress then. Okay, close <laughs> enough then, you see? Yeah. I screwed up on my research a bit, what the heck. Okay, but uh, I think it's time to bring up some more people because I think we've so got too. A, and I we've think got so too. And before we do that, I just want to start by introducing Paul Inson. Now, some of our viewers have seen Paul because he's been here a couple of times, or at least once. Once, once I said, uh, at playing with uh, Ian Thomas a few weeks back, and I'm proud to say Paul also plays in my band now and then, Band from Heaven, yeah. um, as well as many other things that, that you do. A, a bassist, a stalwart bassist in the Hamilton area. The solo bassist? The he, he doesn't have a mic, so, so I know you can't hear them. Stalwart. Song. Stalwart, like a you know guy who works around. Okay. Oh, you do so much more. Yeah, well, he does. So and much more composer. Great, great composer, yeah. and we're going to hear a bit about that coming up. And then I'd like to bring up our second instrumentalist besides yeah. Paul on another stringed instrument, Elspeth Thompson. Thompson. Yeah. Coming up here, I think. Here she comes. She's going to play the viola. Or is it viola? Viola. Viola. Okay. viola. Welcome, Elspeth. Elspeth comes from the Hamilton Philharmonic Orchestra. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever work with Boris there? I'll bet you did. No, I wasn't there. Okay, Boris was too. Okay, he yeah, he had already left. But same band, basically. <laughs> yeah, big band. Not not big band. Okay, orchestra. So, um, and what are we gonna? What are you guys gonna do with Elspeth? Well, this is a song called "Such a Day," and it's a really beautiful line that uh, Paul had written um, in the solo section. And uh, we thought this would be just lovely to have on viola because viola has become one of my favorite instruments. It's. Uh, if yeah. they, they call it the forgotten. The forgotten instrument. I love it because you've got the, the range of the violin up here, you've got the cello and you've got the bass. The viola is the most like the human voice. Uh -huh. And I just love its warm, rich tone. Warm, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Very so warm. I'm very happy that she's with us on this today. Oh, that's great. All right, well, let's hear that. Such a day.
to go Well here I go again A romantic soul and so Well my life is over And all is said and done I won't take for granted I think we should do another one with Elspeth. Oh, right? I do too. Let's let's put her to the test. See yeah. She see if she's good on two, as she was on one. This one would be uh, make this right. Make this right. Yeah. I'm just going to just tell briefly about this song, oh, please. If, if you don't mind. I'd love it. Because this is something um, I haven't really written anything like this before, but it was about a scenario, and uh, just urging someone to really. Um, uh, think about the choices they were making and uh, think about the whole picture, not just now. And, uh, you know, having the opportunity to turn the whole situation around by just going and humbling themselves and just uh, don't mess this up. Make this right. There's just too much counting on it. So I just thought you might need to hear some of that drama yes, leading up to it. Drama's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks. <laughs> When you're all alone What I'm 
Suspense. Hey. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Uh, thanks so much, Elspeth. Yes, thank hey. you so much. Just Very wonderful, wonderful. It's so neat to hear stringed instruments oh, up it's here. Oh, beautiful. And the piano. Beautiful. Like, usually we have guitar guys, but uh, it's great to have, have all you folks here. Um, what about... Um, I know you were up for an award with the Hamilton um, Music Awards that were going on a few years ago, and I think we have a, a quick video of that, Mark. Um, of uh, yeah, um, this song was called uh, "Rain Down on Me." Yeah. Yeah, and I uh, was up for the Hamilton Music Awards there in 2015, I guess. Mm -hmm. There we go. And I know the time. <laughs> Where it starts. Ooh, but don't, don't you forget that joy. It follows after pain. So open up the skies. Come on, come on, come on, a little rain. Four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, rain down on me. Yeah. Well, that's great. Um, that was fun because you know what? I had never ever recorded my own music. Oh. And I decided to do that, you know, which in 2014 and record, um, and you know, like I was already in my 50s and it just felt like the right thing to do. You know, I nice. thought, well, why not just record your own music? So, um, a fantastic band, uh, just great. Uh, oh my gosh, and that was just so much fun and to put that out there. Um, I'd never done anything like that before. I'd always been very shy, but yeah, beautiful band with Tom Forsyth, and I think it was Peter Grimmer on drums there, mm -hmm. Tom Biggis on percussion, um, Dave Field on bass, and we had the most beautiful uh, two, two female singers who were okay. great friends of mine, Nicola Mitchell and, um, and uh, Carla Small, and uh, we just love to sing harmony, and we, we love to sing together. We love to be together when we can, so yeah, yeah. yeah, it was just a great experience. I think it showed. I think you're having fun there. Mm -hmm. What about this next song? Now, I, I know there's a story to that, Worth the Wait. Yeah, so interestingly enough, um, <laughs> I met Paul in high school. He doesn't have a microphone, so maybe he can oh. just nod. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you did. Just talk. In high school, in the high school, um, is now called Robert Bateman in Burlington, but at the right. time it was called Lord Elgin, and it was kind of an interesting, um, kind of an open concept experiment type of school, and I think most of the teachers were philosophy majors, um, so whenever you asked a question, you usually got a question back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a long question. <laughs> but anyways, I met Paul in instrumental music, and I don't know if you remember, Paul, we, we, we played the timpani drums. Yeah. Oh, you did, eh? Yeah, and yeah. we were wonderful. Ah, modest too. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! But okay. um, it's interesting. I, I'd written this song um, f for someone else, actually, uh, just to be very encouraging. And then, it, interesting when um, 
four years ago, Paul and I got together. He just got his new studio up and running, and I went over and, and we laid down a bunch of tracks, just him playing bass, me on his grand piano and singing. And we never really knew what to do with it. We didn't know if we were going to do anything with it. So we just, um, we just let it sit. And so that was like, I think in March or April, it was about four years ago. But we recorded a bunch of tracks, and it was just very natural and very easy, and we had never recorded together. And then over the years, we just decided, right, let's just finish this. Yeah. Let's just finish this. And so it's interesting that this song is called Worth the Wait, um, uh. because uh, I think that the message there is, and it's a very encouraging song, uh, is that um, when you want to do something, just just do it because, you know, even right now in COVID, when you think about it, you know, this is not just it. We may feel kind of stuck right now, but our stories are still being written. So this is not, you yeah. know, we're not just stuck here for good. So it's a really a song of encouragement. So Great. I'll probably talk too much about that one. But anyways, <laughs> no, that's good. Worth the wait. Worth the wait. Worth the wait. Made a feel a fool once more Your confidence is scattered on the floor Get yourself together Cause pretty soon the tide will turn You won't be down for long You'll see, you'll learn And it seems a long shot Such a ways to go Oh, it seems a long shot, longer than you may know. Oh, but don't you worry, don't you hesitate. Because the story of your life will be worth the wait. I know the story of your life will be worth the That's the wonder of this life It's not always doom and gloom and strife Get yourself together Cause pretty soon the tide will turn You won't be down for long You'll see, you'll learn And it seems a long shot Such a ways to go Oh, it seems a long shot, longer than you may know. Oh, but don't you worry, don't you hesitate. Because the story of your life will be worth the wait. The story of your life will be worth the wait. Never, never too late Because the 
story of your life will be worth the wait. I know the story of your life will be worth the wait. The story of your life will be worth the wait. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah. All the chords, the melody, the lyrics, you got it all happening, Karen. <sighs> Thanks. You know, I feel like we need, especially now, I just think we need to hear some some encouragement, right? And yeah. and ride this out and Yeah. Yeah, and be encouraged. So. Strange times. Mm -hmm. Well, now it's my turn. Like the last song said, it's uh, my turn for singing the blues. No, it's your turn it's to sing turn. the blues. It's my turn. And this yeah. is kind of, a, you know, a, a nice, uh, it's a little uh, straight ahead, little blues swing and yeah. about being miserable. And you just can't be miserable when you got a swing to it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like it's my time for singing them blues. My time, I get to choose. I'm gonna hang up my dance and shoes and dream the day away. Feels like it's my time to stay here in bed. I should be working, but I'll just stay here instead. I'm gonna pull out the sheets, pull out the shades, and snooze the day away. Have an oh, oh, it's me, commiseration Don't want to have no warm and tender conversation Cause today is the day I'm gonna make the world go away Don't stop by, I ain't even taking reservations Feels like it's my time for singing the blues. I deserve it. I pay my dues. I'm gonna wallow in my lesson too. It's my turn for singing the blues. Well, it's my turn for singing the blues. I deserve it. I get to choose. I'm gonna wallow in my lesson too. It's my turn for singing the blues. Oh yeah, it's my turn for singing the blues one more time. It's my turn for singing the blues. That's a happy little ditty, isn't that's it? That's a happy oh, Very nice, Karen. Well, that's bringing us almost to the close of the show, I hate to say, but boy, it sure goes fast, doesn't it? I gotta say thank you to you guys for coming on, and Elspeth as well. 
uh, Paul Inson here and Karen Thornton. But I also want to say thanks to our sponsors. We've got, for instance, Neo Dental. I want to mention Dr. Steve Thorderson. He's my dentist. He's been that way for a while. That guy has definitely fixed my teeth, and um, I highly recommend him. Also, Able Pest Control. I, I roped them into being sponsors too because they do my house and my business and they're good guys and they donate money, so I love them. And Judy Marsales Real Estate, can't forget her, best real estate broker in all of Ontario, if not Canada. She's tops in my book. Uh, we got Marie Phillips from Next Steps Planning who's been our sponsor since day one, so we love Marie. Thanks so much to Marie Phillips. And our crew, we got Nathan on the camera here. Uh, we've got Norm Thornton, no relation, no relation to camera. Okay, wait, well, maybe they are related. Maybe that's her husband, Norm Thornton on sound from Long and McQuaid. Uh, we've got, um, who else have we got? Uh, uh, hey, Mark, I for, almost forgot Mark Scola. He's the guy who gets it out on YouTube for us. Patrick Maia is also helping with that from Clear Cable. And our theater staff, Dan Fournier and Neil Miller who really uh, keep it all together for us, and they're, they're the producers of this show, I would say. God knows I'm not doing it. I'm just doing the hosting bit. I just want to mention next week, it's dark, and that's theater language for we're closed. Uh, so we won't be on next week. Uh, but the following week, we've got Dan Edmonds, now, my next door neighbor, when I was growing up, was a great mentor and influence in my life, and that was Dan's father, Bob Edmonds. I tried to talk him into coming on the show, but he said no. So we got Dan coming on, and Dan was the driving force behind Harlan Pepper. You may remember them, a great old Westdale band uh, from a few years ago. Young band, so maybe uh, if you're my age, you might not have uh, known them too well, but uh, yeah, that's Dan Edmonds coming on the show after next week. Following that is Chris Chambers, who we also see around Westdale all the time, great rock and roll musician, songwriter, and uh, stage performer. So that's Chris Chambers. And last but not least, we got Ronnie Hawkins. I was just at Ronnie's house a couple days ago, and uh, he's going to be on the show along with his driver and best friend, and a close friend of mine, Gary Lucas. Uh, who's been with Ronnie since, uh, I believe, the 60s. <laughs> and uh, they're both still going strong. Um, and uh, they, got, they got some killer stories, I'll, I'll tell you that. So uh, although Ronnie won't be here, he's phoning in from his home up by Peterborough there. So we'll get him on, uh, on the screen, and you'll be able to see him. So that's our lineup for the next few weeks, folks. And I uh, hope you can join us uh, each Monday. And if not, don't forget you can watch, it, watch us on YouTube after the fact or on uh, Facebook. Uh, it's also recorded on there. And I just want to put in one last plug for um, Donations, if anyone can possibly dig deep, there's a little donate button on the screen every now and then, or you can go to the westdale.ca, because we're just trying to keep this theater alive and get through this whole lockdown thing, which hopefully won't go too much longer, but it's still a little soon to say how long it's gonna be. So if you feel like donating, please give us a, a hand there. And other than that, that's it for our show. We're going to finish up with one more song, I believe, Karen, that you guys are you're going to take yeah, it home with. For sure. Thanks which, so much. This is called Just Move On. Just, just Move On. Just Move I, On. i got to thank you guys because I, I'm so used to having guitarists up here. <laughs> it's so neat to have a, a pianist and a really good one. I mean, you're so good on that thing. I don't even know what chords those all are. That's why she got me in on the easy I don't songs. Either. I don't <laughs> okay, you're faking it too. And to hear Paul on the stand-up bass, we don't often get the stand-up bass with all those little slides you do. It's sure been a treat, so thanks a lot, guys. Thanks so much. Thanks, yeah, Mike. it's been great. It's all great. right, let's take her home. Karen Thornton. Thanks for watching, folks. Just a waste of time And there's absolutely nothing
Thanks a lot, folks. Good night. We'll see you. Thank you. <laughs>